talking laser enhancements. You'll notice that on the bottom we've got this, this duct right in bottom center. When we first received this laser from False Spectrum, that was pretty much open. It was nothing connected to it. After doing some research and digging around on the backside, it actually noticed that there was a connection point to it underneath, but nothing going to it. It's that bottom duct there. That top duct goes to a set of uh, louvers on the top side. What we were finding is that as you're lasering, you generate a lot of smoke. Now the beam path comes out from the rear end of the laser in this corner. So the, the big tube is behind here, the beam comes through here, reflects off the mirror, comes down to, the, to this secondary, and then to the flying head here. When you generate a lot of smoke in the area, you want, don't want it to get in the way of the beam path, because the more smoke you get in the, in the path, the less power that effectively comes out of the nozzle. So what we were finding is that although the rear louvers of the back here were doing a dandy job of picking up all the smoke, we are thinking, wouldn't it be better if the smoke were sucked out from beneath? So, we took a look, found that duct down there was being totally unused, so that was using a, becoming more of a fresh air intake. So we created a splitter at the back here, and that splitter connects to both the top and the bottom, the top set of louvers and the bottom set. So we attach it to a Y, bring it up to the master duct, and up she goes to fume extraction. So now by using that kind of uh, throttle right there and here, we are actually able to control how much airflow goes through the whole unit. And down there it controls the top versus the bottom. So now we actually get a lot better usage of air uh, being pulled out of the bottom and sucking the fumes away from the top of uh, the workpiece. Because with the top of the workpiece, the less the less smoke you have in the way, the better you're going to have, uh, the, the more power you're going to get to your piece for the final cut. So continuing our discussions on how to level a bed, especially on these really big 48 by 36 inch uh, beds, as found like on this full spectrum and any other Chinese lasers, is that they include this honeycomb screen. And this one's seen a little bit of use and you can see that. But interestingly enough, you'll find that actually they've got this lip. Now, in this particular instance, Full Spectrum's done a really nice job. They've got this beautiful cross-section on this, this particular type of uh, beam. And it does a great job of deflecting the laser energy off to left and right. But it's actually made of a fairly low grade of aluminum and does flex. But further to that is when you have this little lip on the side of your honeycomb and you rest it on top of this, this edge, you end up getting a bit of a sag because the edge is supported by here on, on the far edge and then it drops down to the next side. So, so the honeycomb wants to sag and hit the surface. Our first solution was actually to take out a little end mill, <clears throat> stick it on a um, high speed rotary cutter with a, uh, with a uh, jig so we can get it nice and level and machined off all this area so whenever we put this surface in there, it drops into that pocket and makes sure it's only the honeycomb surface which is laying on top of the uh, top of the vector grid. But further to that, on the back side, we were actually ca ca uh, careful enough, we filed this in a little bit because as you can imagine, when we put in these whole trays, we slide them in there and when you want to slide it out, the last thing you want to do is get snagged on there and possibly damaged something. So we've tapered these up a little bit so we can slide things in and out of that quite nicely. And that helped us out immensely in making for a much more uh, level bed. But it still wasn't a final solution. See, we have a bridge underneath. Now one of the major enhancements that we added to this was we put in a secondary support rail underneath because this rail, as nice as it's straight as it looks like from the profile going in, actually flexes quite a bit once you put it under load. Like I said, it's got a beautiful profile, but it's a fairly low grade aluminum, so it's not very stiff. So our solution was to put in a piece of cross member underneath, have it spaced up here with some uh, bolts and then a truss work located on each side that gave us the ability to lift it up and push up against the center. Now, Jason, who consults for us, came up with this really nice idea of a nice little adjustment knob and some mounting flanges 
And so if we want to push up on the center portion of the rail here to lift up the middle, we just reach underneath down here to make the adjustment. There's an adjustment on the left side and on the right side. And so now you'll also notice that we've taken our belts off of our vertical uh, table adjustment because we really don't change our, our heights very much. So we use those to give us four points of adjustment at the far corners and then we use these other adjustment knobs here and here to give us the adjustments towards the middle. And so in conjunction all four points, one, two, three, four, that gives us the corner leveling and then five and six give us the ability to bring the middle up or down or adjust it as we need be to get our uh, tolerance just right for the best cuts possible.